If you're looking to upgrade your church's mixing console in 2021 and your budget is between three to $5,000, this video is for you. I will share my top two mixing console recommendations for churches. I know how overwhelming it can feel trying to pick the right gear for your worship ministry. In this video, I'll help you cut through the noise and narrow your decision down to two mixers that will work great for the vast majority of small to medium sized churches. Whether you're upgrading an old mixer or you're building a new system from scratch, you're in the right place. This video is brought to you by The Beginner's Guide to Church Sound, a step-by-step -step online course for worship tech teams. It's a concise introduction to mixing audio in a worship ministry environment, covering topics such as the anatomy of a sound system, signal processing, and navigating pretty much any modern day mixing console. Click the link below to enroll your team today. If you're looking to buy a brand new mixing console for your church in 2021, I have two recommendations. Both of these mixing consoles cost around $3,000. So when you factor in the cost of a stage box, which I highly recommend, you're still looking at less than $5,000 for a really robust setup. And let me know down below in the comments if you were building a brand new sound system for your church, which mixing console would you pick? My first recommendation for a church mixing console is the Behringer Wing. I may be a little biased towards this console since it's what we use at my church, South Fellowship, but here's why I think it stands out among the pack. First, you get a massive value for the price of this console. 10 years ago, Behringer disrupted the world of digital mixing consoles with the X32. They've done the same thing with the Wing. For $3,000, you get 48 stereo channels and 28 stereo mix buses, meaning you have plenty of room to accommodate a growing worship ministry. Second, the Wing has one of the most intuitive and highly customizable user interfaces I've seen on any mixing console. It's so easy to navigate the routing, the processing, and you can customize the layout of the mixing console however you want. I think it's actually much more intuitive than the X32 or M32. And because you can customize the layout of the board, you can set it up exactly how you need it for your Sunday services or other events at your church. The third reason I recommend the Wing is the ease of upgrading. If you already have bought into Behringer gear, like the stage boxes or personal monitoring devices. The X32 and M32 digital consoles have by far been the most popular solutions for churches in previous years. That means there's a good chance your church already has AES50 enabled stage boxes like the S32, S16, or P16 personal mixers. That was the case for my church. When we made this upgrade to the wing a few months ago, we didn't need to buy any new stage boxes or personal mixers. They were automatically compatible with the wing. The Wing also has an expansion card slot for digital audio networking protocols like Dante. They just announced the Dante expansion card in early 2021, and I expect they will release a Matic and a Waves sound grid card in the near future. My only caveat about the Wing is that since it's a newer model, it's only been out for just over a year, you need to be patient with Behringer as they continue to release software updates to fix any bugs and add cool new features. My prediction is that this console will be become just as widely used as the X32 or M32 over the next few years as it matures and more people realize how much value it provides. I also predict that you'll smash the like button on this video before you get to the end. Don't let me down. My second recommendation for a digital mixing console for churches is the Allen & Heath SQ5, 6, or 7, any one of those consoles in the SQ series. Allen & Heath makes very high-end mixing consoles you'll find in large professional venues. With the SQ line of consoles, they packed the same pro-level digital sound processing into an affordable and portable form factor. The primary difference between the SQ5, 6, and 7 is the amount of hardware you get, just how big the boards are. The features and processing power of the various models are identical. For most churches, I'd recommend saving money by getting the SQ5, the smallest version, and then putting those dollars towards more stage boxes. 
things. Although I haven't used the SQ5 in a week-to-week -week church mixing environment, we do have one here in our church front studio that we use for all of our audio processing. First off, I'm blown away by the sonic quality of the preamps and processing in this console. It's subtle and hard to describe until you hear it for yourself, but if you're an audiophile who really cares about preamps and digital processing and latency, you might want to grab an SQ series console. Second, I love the hardware quality of these consoles. It feels pro level. Uh, the faders and the knobs are very responsive and they just feel like they're very high quality hardware. Third, I'm impressed with the remote control apps that come with the SQ series of mixers. Most remote control apps for your phone or tablet seem like an afterthought of the manufacturer. I've never been really impressed with the Behringer apps, but that's not the case with the SQ apps that allow users to control the entire console with a tablet or just their monitor mix with their phone. The SQ consoles have an expansion card slot for Dante, Waves, or Natty. The touchscreen on the SQ mixing consoles is very responsive and the menus are very intuitive to navigate. Probably not as intuitive as the wing, but it's still pretty good. You can't go wrong buying an Allen Heath SQ console. You're getting pristine audio processing and ultra low latency. If you're an audiophile who really cares about that stuff, then it may be the best console for you. But I'm gonna give this console my second place recommendation to the Wing because I think the Wing packs more value for churches and I really like the innovation that I'm seeing within this console. One of the things I love about the Wing is the larger selection of plugins and effects that emulate some of the most popular plugins for EQ, compression, and vocal tuning. On this SQ console, you only get the basic channel strip processing and an eight rack effects engine where you have 16 effects to work with on the wing. So here's what I think it comes down to when making the choice between the wing or the SQ console. First, do you already have Behringer gear like the stage boxes and P16 personal mixers for monitors? Then I think it's better to go with the wing, way more cost effective. Do you want more effects in plugin options? Then perhaps you should go with the wing. Are you an audiophile who wants premium digital sound processing in a small form factor? Then go with an SQ console. There's much more that could be said about the Behringer wing and the SQ sound consoles that may sway you toward one console over the other. But in the end, the choice is yours. I don't think you can go wrong with either one. But Jake, what about the consoles by Presonus, Yamaha, Soundcraft, Mackie, whatever brand you want to name. What about the Waves LV1 system? All of those other manufacturers have great mixing solutions in the three to $5,000 range, but they don't make it into my top two recommendations. And if I explained all of those reasons for that in this video, we would be here all day. But I do think those mixing consoles deserve an honorable mention. And if your heart is really set on the Yamaha TF or PreSonus Studio Live or Soundcraft SI Image, impact and the mixer has all the essential features that you're looking for in a digital console, then go for it. But as of the year 2021, when I'm publishing this video, my team is going to be recommending either the Behringer Wing or the Allen & Heath SQ series consoles to the clients that we work with in worship ministry school. Now I want to recommend some peripheral gear you're going to need with your mixing console to ensure you have adequate IO or input outputs for your band, along with adequate in-ear monitoring. First, First, let's take a look at a setup we would want for the Behringer Wing. The Behringer Wing has a ton of flexibility for audio inputs and outputs, or I.O. For most churches, you're going to need an AES-50 enabled stage box. I recommend having at least 32 inputs and 16 outputs available on your stage. First, you could purchase the Behringer S32, which is the most economical option. If you want the same connectivity as the S32, but with Midas Pro preamps, were for slightly better sound quality, you could get the Midas DL32. Or you could purchase two Behringer S16s, placing them on different sides of your stage. 
Or if you go the Behringer route, you could also pay a little bit more for the Behringer SD16 or SD8 stage boxes that have inputs that take both quarter inch and XLR connections, providing some more convenience. You'll have a couple of options for in-ear monitoring. You could route mix buses to your analog outputs on your stage box, which then will connect to your in-ear monitor transmitters if you go wireless or to headphone amplifiers, which are very cost effective or you could acquire personal monitors like the PowerPlay P16s or the incredibly powerful Midas DP48. Both personal mixers will receive audio over AES50 protocol. My personal opinion, I lean towards pulling my in-ear monitor mix directly from analog mix bus outputs from the stage box into a wireless transmitter and having a stereo mix or having a stereo headphone amp. Or I would love to get my hands on the Midas DP48. The P16s are great, but I just can't stand the, the limitation of the 16 channel count on those mixers. Now let's take a look at the stage box and monitoring solutions for the SQ line of consoles. Allen and Heath stage boxes are on the pricier side, almost twice the cost of Behringer stage boxes but you're gonna get their more premium preamps. I would recommend picking up two of the DX168 boxes to provide you with 32 inputs and 16 outputs on your stage. For in-ear monitoring, you could route your auxiliary mixes to the analog outputs on the stage boxes, or you could pick up Allen & Heath personal monitoring systems like the 16 channel ME500 or the 40 channel ME1. I've listed off a ton of gear in this video, so I want to remind you to download our free worship ministry toolkit and navigate to the mixing console tab where you'll see all of the items and URLs listed in one convenient place. So far in this video, I've given you my top two recommendations for the best digital mixing consoles for your church. And we also talked about the stage box configurations as well as in your monitoring system. Hopefully I've saved you a ton of time and headache as you make that final purchase decision. All I ask in return is that you smash the like button on this video. Here are a few other ideas for you. If you're on a tighter budget for your worship ministry, then I would pick up a Behringer X32 or X32 Compact. I'm not sure how much longer they will be making this console, but the prices have recently dropped to less than $2,000, which is insane for what these consoles can do, even though they're a bit older. If you have an even tighter budget and you want to be ultra portable, then I'd consider picking up the Behringer Xair 18. As I already mentioned in this video, there are other great mixing consoles on the market, and perhaps you can come up with your own reasons or preferences for choosing a mixer by a different manufacturer like PreSonus, Yamaha, Soundcraft, Mackie, QSC, you name it. And that's okay. I know there are other great consoles out there. But like I already said, I'm seeing the Wing and the SQ consoles really catching on in the past couple months. A lot of churches are going from having their first digital mixing console, like the X32 or maybe one of the old PreSonus Studio Lives, and they're ready for an upgrade. And I see so many of them either going with the Wing or an SQ series console. And and one of the benefits of owning one of these two consoles will be the community and the support that surrounds them. And I truly believe that's a factor worth taking into consideration is how widely adopted is the product. I know our team here at Churchfront in the very near future, we're gonna be developing complete walkthroughs and setup videos for these consoles. So definitely check out Worship Ministry School. We can walk you through how to set up these consoles step-by-step step for the first time. And we really believe that these particular consoles are gonna serve so many churches very, very well over the coming years. I wanna remind you to check out our courses linked below this video, especially the Beginner's Guide to Church Sound. It's such a great starting place for worship leaders wanting to learn more about building and navigating a robust sound system for your church. It covers all the fundamentals of processing audio and mixing for worship. It demystifies all the terms you hear like gain, EQ, compression, gates, effects, mix buses, etc. So go ahead, click the link below, enroll your team today. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our latest videos to help you grow yourself and grow your worship ministry.